by the dear that yearns for running streams, so my soul yearns for you, my Lord. Psalm 42, verse 1. Beloved in Christ, your soul is longing for the Lord. My soul is longing for the Lord. Our souls are yearning for the word of God. Our souls need refreshment from the word of God. And that is also often said to us in Isaiah chapter 55, verses 10 to 11. That for as the rain and the snow comes down from the skies and do not return before having watered the air. Join me and other priests of the Archdiocese of Tamale from the 1st of June 2019 to listen and watch the living streams of water on our YouTube channel, Depsocon TV Tamale and Facebook channel, Department of Pastoral and Social Communication, Depsocon Tamale. Each day, 12 noon, listen, may God restore, renew, and strengthen your faith in the Catholic Church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. O Queen of Heaven, rejoice, Alleluia! For him whom you did marry to bear, Alleluia, has risen as he said, Alleluia. Pray for us to God, Alleluia. Rejoice and be glad, O Virgin Mary, Alleluia. For the Lord has risen indeed, Alleluia. O God, our Father, you give joy to the world by the resurrection of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through the prayers of his mother, the Virgin Mary, bring us to the happiness of eternal life through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, you are welcome to living streams of water. Today is Wednesday, the seventh week of Easter. We would like to reflect with you from Acts of the Apostles, Chapter 20, the verse 28 to 38. In those days, Paul said to the elders of the church of Ephesus, Take heed to yourself and to all the flock in which the Holy Spirit has made you guidance to feed the church of the Lord, which he obtained with his own blood. I know that after my departure, fierce wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock, and from among you, your own self, will arise men, speaking perverse things, to draw away the disciples after them. Therefore, be alert. Remembering that for three years I did not cease night and day to admonish everyone with tears. And now I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you the inheritance among all those who are sanctified. I coveted no one's silver or gold or appeal you yourself know that these hands ministered to my necessity and to those who were with me. In all things I have shown you that by so toiling one must help the weak, remembering the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, how he said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. And when he had spoken thus, he knelt down and prayed with them all. And they all wept and embraced Paul 
and kissed him, sorrowing most of all because of the words he had spoken, that they should see his face no more. And they brought him to the ship. The word of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, yesterday St. Paul helped us to go ahead to understand what it means to dwell in the Spirit, to use the Spirit to work. Today he has his final words to the people, especially to the elders, the leaders, those he has placed for them to become the heads of the community. And he warned them. He admonished them upon things that will come when he had left. My dear brother, my dear sister, it is very noticing that he made mention of the fact that there would be people within and outside who will come and say things that are not true about the doctrines and the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ. When you do this and you learn about the patristics at that time, you hear people who are called heretics, which brings about false doctrines, false teachings, and they call them heresies. These things, we still have them in our time. Today, we have many preachers who are saying that because Jesus Christ has come to wash away our sins and has cleansed us from our sins, for you and I, there should be, be suffering in our life. It is not true. Even for Jesus himself told us that he who wants to follow me should do what? Should pick up his cross daily and do what? And follow me. And St. Paul will let us understand that night and day he has been toiling with tears. My dear brother, my dear sister, it is not true. Yes, it's good that God will provide your need. You cry out to him and he will listen to you. But it doesn't mean that temptations, difficulties, sufferings will not come into your life. They will come. And they will definitely must be there. And if they are not there, you will not really appreciate the God that you worship. He is a merciful father, yes. He is one who takes care of our needs, yes. But even when he was departing, in our gospel reading, you hear him say, Let us be one. As we were one. Unity is one of the things. And again, we are in the world, but we are not of the world. So once you live in this world, know that difficulties are not your portion but they will come into your life tribulations will come into your life but remember yesterday he told us that I have overcome all these difficulties there is also another painful truth that preachers will want to use but they have forgotten that society also has its own way Today, you hear many people, oh, it is enough for me to do anything the way I feel. That is a false doctrine. That is a false teaching. Even as Christians, we are told, when Jesus Christ created the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, after the world was created and it created man, why, did he, why didn't God create another man to join to Adam? He created Eve, taking part of the rib to create another woman. Today, we have come out to say the way I feel. I am feeling to become or to get married to a man. 
because I'm a man. I feel I should get married to a woman because I'm a woman. From the beginning of the world, the truth is that male and female, he created them. And when you read Matthew chapter 19, verse 1 following to 12, he will tell you that a man will leave his mother's house and go and cleave to the woman. He didn't say he's going to cleave to another man. Beloved, when we speak about gayism and other things, we are speaking about people talking about rights. It is my right. Yes, it is your right. But your Christian teaching speaks about the truth of your right. Have you forgotten? If you speak about adultery, fornication, you think that those who do them, it is not also their right? It is. But we are told that even fornicators will not even enter the kingdom of God. Adulteress will not go there. But yet, why can't we speak against some of these odds in society? And we are speaking about, it is my right, social right, human right. Your right is also for you to know the truth. And the truth is that a male must be married to a female. A male cannot be married to a male. And a female cannot be married to a female. And we speak about human rights. Truth is in Jesus. And in Jesus we have the truth. Beloved in Christ. Another false heresy that is going around is that oh, I can just do whatever that I feel because it is my feeling. You can't do whatever that you feel. No. You do what is right and what pleases the will of God but not what pleases you as a human person. Oh, don't worry. Ah, what is it? In my church, just come. I will give you some oil. You go and use. Yes. Jesus has made it known to us. In James, the apostle speaks about it. From James chapter 5, verse 12 following. Is anyone among you who is in sorrow? He should sing songs. Is anyone among you who is in distress? He should pray. If anyone among you who is sick, he should call upon the elders of the church. The elder of the church should come and anoint him. And the prayer said in faith will bring healing to the sick person. My dear brother, my dear sister, that is the truth. The truth is not come and take oil and when you bath with it, when you do with it, everything of your problem will be finished. That is half truth. And half truth is not the complete truth that we need. Beloved in Christ, the attack that will come will be within the church and outside the church. Let us focus on our doctrines as Catholics. Let us have faith and believe in the doctrines that we profess. And let us walk in the light of Christ. Paul has warned us today. Wolves will come and tell you things that are different from what the apostles have taught us. They will come and tell you things that are not from God. Let us be careful and walk in the light of Christ. May the, as we pray, through the novena for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, we ask that God may stretch his hands upon you, may reveal his saving grace, that when the Spirit comes, we may stand more firmly to defend the truth to the end. May the Lord bless and keep you. May he face shed its light upon you and grant you his peace. May he bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a blessed day. Like the deer that yearns for running streams, so my soul yearns for you, my Lord. Psalm 42, verse 1. Beloved in Christ, 
Your soul is longing for the Lord. My soul is longing for the Lord. Our souls are yearning for the word of God. Our souls need refreshment from the word of God. And that is also often said to us in Isaiah chapter 55, verses 10 to 11. That for as the rain and the snow comes down from the skies and do not return before having watered the air. Join me and other priests of the Archdiocese of Tamale from the 1st of June 2019 to listen and watch the living streams of water on our YouTube channel, Depsocon TV Tamale and Facebook channel, Department of Pastoral and Social Communication, Depsocon Tamale. Each day, 12 noon, listen, may God restore, renew, and strengthen your faith in the Catholic Church.